Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to uh, Unizor uh, Education. Um, I'm continuing with mini theorems related to parallel lines. These mini theorems might be just a bit more difficult, um, but nevertheless, they're really not very difficult at all. Um, now, um, they're all based on whatever um, we discussed before in the previous lecture about mini theorems one. This is mini theorems two. And obviously, they're based on the most important fundamental property of the parallel lines. That's the characteristic property of the angles when the two parallel lines are uh, intersected by some transversal. Um, so, without further ado, let me just go one by one. In the right triangle, with one acute angle of 30 degrees, the leg opposite to this angle is equal to half of hypotenuse. Okay. So, you have a 30 degrees right triangle, and this is obviously 60 degrees. Now, I have to prove that the shorter leg, which uh, is across the 30 degrees angle, is half the hypotenuse. Okay, how can we do it? Actually, it's very simple. Let's continue on this side. Reflect, basically. This point, reflect to this. So, since this is a perpendicular, these two segments are congruent by construction, basically. Now, what do we have right now? Well, um, we have... These two triangles, ABD and DBC, are both right triangles with common leg and another leg equal to each other by construction. So they are completely congruent to each other, which means this is also 60 degrees and this is also 30 degrees. Now, what it means, it means that in the triangle ABC, all three angles are 60 degrees. So it's Equal, equal angled triangle, so to speak. And uh, in the triangle, across equal length, uh, uh, equal um, angles lie uh, equal sides. So it's equilateral triangle. Since it's equilateral triangle, BC is congruent to AC. Uh, and since DC is half of AC, that's why DC is half of hypotenuse BC in the original triangle BCD. All right? A small additional construction of a triangle on that side was the some kind of necessary um, consideration to, to prove the theorem. Sum of all interior angles of a convex polygon with n sides equal to 180 times n minus 2 if you have convex polygon. Let's assume this is convex polygon. Now, convex polygon has a property that from any point within it, all vertices are visible, which means these lines do not cross any sides of the polygon. That's what convex actually implies. Now, if this is true, and we know that there are n sides, n sides um, of this polygon, well, let's just consider all these small triangles. Each one of them has 180 degrees uh, as sum of these angles. So if we will summarize them all together, we will have 180 times n. Now, sum of all these angles, of all these triangles, what's the difference between this sum and only interior angles of, uh, of the polygon? Well, the, obviously we have 360 degree extra when we have summarized all angles, because all these angles, they were included into our uh, calculations, but they are not interior angles. All other, however, 
do combining together make up all the interior angles of the uh, polygon. So I have to subtract 360, which is equal exactly to what's necessary to do. Okay. Now, sum of all exterior angles of a convex polygon uh, count only one exterior angle for each vertex with n sides equal to 360. All right, so if you have, again, some kind of polygon and you have one exterior angle on each side, Then some of these, in this case, five angles, uh, but in general it, it doesn't really depend on the number of sides of polygon as long as the polygon is um, convex. Then the sum of these angles is supposed to be equal to 360 degrees. All right, let me think about how to prove it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so let's choose one particular vertex and connect it with all uh, No, I think it's I think it's not necessary. I think there is an easier way to do it. Each interior angle, let's call this angle uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, each corresponding interior angle is equal to 180 degrees minus one, 180 degrees minus two, etc. 180 degrees minus angle number n, whatever the n is, like five in this particular case. Now, these are interior angles. Now, we know that the sum of all interior angles is supposed to be 180 times n minus 2. Now, if we will summarize this, we will have 180 times n minus s. s is sum of these angles. Okay? Angle number one, number two, etc. Angle number n. These are our angles. I put this sign of the angle so we don't really confuse angle number one and number one. Uh, so that's what we have here, right? We have this equation: 180 times n minus sum of all exterior angles. Now these are Sum, this is sum of all interior angles, with, which by previous many theorems we have proved that this is 180 times n minus 2. Well, therefore, from this equation, what do we see? Uh, 180 times n minus 2 is times n minus 360 is equal to 180 times n minus s. Well, from which obviously s is equal to 360. That's what is supposed to be proven. By the way, as, as you have noticed, I did not really prepare myself for this particular, particular lecture with all the proofs. I'm just trying to solve these problems as we speak uh, in, in real time. Uh, well, that's why I just you know, decided to do it one way, then realized that maybe it's not necessary and use another one. All right, if point A is centrally symmetrical with point A prime relative to a center P, so you have one point A and center P, and it's centrally symmetrical, which means A, P, A prime is one line and A, P is congruent to P, A star, uh, P, A prime. Okay. 
and point B is centrally symmetrical. Okay, let's say point B is also centrally symmetrical. Let's say this is B and this is B prime. Okay, then what? Then uh, segments AB and A prime B prime are congruent and parallel. So these two segments are congruent and parallel. Well, look, I mean, it's obvious. Two triangles, this is equal, this is equal, and the vertical angle. So triangles are congruent. Since they are congruent, it means these two angles are equal. And these two angles are equal. And this is congruent to this. So what do we have? We have congruency of these segments. And because this and this angle are uh, all alternate interior with these two lines and transversal, and these angles are uh, congruent to each other, that's why the lines are parallel. So we have proven the parallelism and congruence of these two segments. That was easy. Quadrangle with both pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other have both pairs of opposite sides and opposite angles. Okay, so we have quadrangle with opposite sides parallel to each other. It's called parallelogram, by the way. So this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this. Well, from parallelism, it follows that um, these two angles are congruent to each other, which means this and this are supplemental. Here, this angle is congruent to this one because of these parallel and transversal. So we have this angle congruent to this as corresponding angles with these parallel and the transversal. This is congruent to this because of these parallel and this as a transversal. That's why these two are congruent among themselves, since they are separately congruent to the third one. Similarly, this guy. Same, same type of uh, proof. So now we have angles uh, opposite to each other um, being uh, congruent to each other. Okay, now we have to prove that the uh, sides opposite to each other are also uh, congruent to each other. All right, I draw a diagonal. I don't need this anymore. So I draw a diagonal. Now, since this is, uh, it, can be, it can be considered as two parallel and diagonal being a transversal. Now, what do we have here? These two triangles have common side. Now, this angle is congruent to this because of these parallel, this is transversal, and these are alternate interior. And this angle is uh, congruent to this because of these parallel and the same transversal and these are alternate interior. So we have these two triangles, this one and this, congruent to each other because they have a common side and two angles uh, which, which are on both sides of this, of this side. They're congruent to each other and that's why opposite sides are congruent because they lie across the congruent angles. And same thing with these guys. So, if you have a parallelogram, which means two parallel lines crossing two other parallel lines, 
then you have opposite uh, angles congruent to each other, this and this, and opposite side, sides congruent uh, to each other. Next. If in triangle ABC, point N is a midpoint of side BC, okay, that requires some drawing, uh, triangle ABC okay. point N is a midpoint of side BC this is N midpoint point M is a point on the side AB Such that segment MN is parallel to AC. So we took the midpoint on the BC and draw a parallel line to the base AC. Then we have to prove that M is also a midpoint of this segment and the segment MN is half of segment AC. By the way, this is called mid-segment. The line connecting two midpoints is called mid-segment. So basically this theorem is that um, you can draw the mid-segment by having only one side divided in half and drawing a parallel line, and the second that the mid-segment is half the base, which it parallels to. Okay, that's right. All right, let's think how can we do it. Um, okay, let's draw from N another line parallel to another side. So MN is drawn from the N parallel to AC, and P is drawn parallel to AB. Now, so what do we see? Well, obviously these are triangles which you have to consider, M, B, N, and P, N, C. Now, let's think about what can we have from this. Well, obviously since these two are parallel, then these angles are corresponding angles with parallel lines and transversal, which means they are congruent. Okay, now, these are parallel lines, and this is transversal, so these are corresponding angles, right? So we have angle, 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 angle. Now, how about these two sides? Obviously, they're congruent because, if you remember, N was chosen as a midpoint of segment BC. So these are two halves. That's why they're all equal. That's why triangles are equal, and that's why uh, that's why this is equal to this. Now, let's consider M and P A. This is uh, a quadrangle, a polygon with four vertices with two sides parallel to each other and two other sides parallel to each other. That's the previous theorem and we know that opposite sides are congruent to each other. So what we have proven here is that this piece is congruent to this and this is congruent to this. That's why they're congruent to each other. That's why M is a midpoint of uh, AB. So, if we draw a parallel line from midpoint on this side, we get the midpoint on this side as well. Now, um, obviously, P is exactly in the same position, because how, can we, how, how did we obtain P? By drawing a line from a midpoint parallel to this. So, P is also a midpoint because of the same 
because of the same property of parallel line drawn through the midpoint of one side. So these two are also equal to each other. So, um, what we have to prove right now is that this line MN is half of AC. Well, but we have already proven that these two triangles, MBN and PNC, are congruent to each other, which means the congruence of these two uh, segments. And again, since this is equal to this and this to this, it makes MN half of AC. So what we have proven here is that the mid-segment connects two midpoints parallel to the base and its length is half the base it's parallel to. Okay? Next. Given an angle MAN, MAN, and two points P and Q on the AM side, such that segment AP and PQ are congruent. Okay, so the length of these segments is the same. Um, two parallel lines two parallel lines, one line and two lines. Two parallel lines and they're crossing another in P prime and Q prime. So if these segments are equal, the theorem states that these two are supposed to be equal as well. Regardless of what kind of parallel lines, this way or that way, as long as the parallel lines cross another uh, side of this angle in some points, then it cuts equal segments uh, from this side if uh, these segments are equal as well. They're not equal among themselves, but if these are equal to each other, then these will be also equal to each other. Okay, how can we prove that? I think it's a very uh, similar to the previous problem. I think what we should do is let me try. From P prime, if I will do parallel to AM, what happens? Uh, let's say it's point R. Well, since these are two parallel, and this is transversal, then these angles are uh, congruent. Since these are two parallel lines by construction and the transversal, then these two angles are equal to each other. Okay. Uh, I think I'm almost right. I think I should start from another point. Let me see. Uh, I think instead of parallel from P prime, I have to put parallel from P. Parallel this way. And this is point R. Yes, I think that would be better. So, from the P, I draw a line parallel to AM until it crosses the Q, Q prime in point R. Now what do we have? Since these two lines are parallel, and this is transversal, then these two angles are uh, congruent. Now, since uh, since these two Uh, one second. 
which one do we have to consider now? Yes, since these two lines are parallel and this is transversal, these angles are uh, corresponding to each other, two parallel and the transversal, so these angles correspond to each other. And we have given that these two segments uh, are congruent to each other. That's why triangle A P prime P and P R Q are congruent to each other. It's side and two angles on both sides. Now, if that's true, it means that these two sides are equal to each other. AP prime and PR are congruent because they are corresponding sides in congruent triangles. But at the same time, PR and P prime Q prime also equal to each other because these are parallel lines. This is the same quadrangle with opposite sides parallel to each other. So the opposite sides are supposed to be uh, congruent. And that's why we have these two pieces, these two segments, both independently congruent to one, and that's why um, their length is the same. End of story. So if you have certain number of equal segments on one side of the angle, by the way, it's not necessarily two, you can have three, etc. The proof is exactly the same. And then you draw parallel lines to another side of the angle, then on another side you will also have um, equal uh, segments. And as uh, an interesting way to divide a segment into any number of uh, parts, equal parts, you can consider the following. For instance, you would like to divide this segment into whatever, seven equal parts. How to do it? Well, have an angle, then have any um, segment you want, doesn't matter, and put it seven times here. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Then, next, you connect the end with this and draw parallel lines from corresponding points down. So if these were equal to each other in lengths by construction, then these will be also equal to each other because of the previous theorem. And that's how you divide the particular segment into one, two, three, four, five, and five different parts equally. Okay. Uh, and one more thing, um, a theorem about medians of a triangle. So let's say you have three medians What's interesting is that this particular point, point, let's say, call it P, uh, D, D, E, F. So the point where medians are crossing each other, and we did actually talk about why they're crossing in the same point, all three, all three medians. What's interesting is this point divides each median into 2 to 1 ratio. So this piece is twice as big as this one. And the same is this one, these two pieces, and these two pieces. Each piece which is closer to the vertex is twice as big as the one which is close to the opposite side. How can we prove it? All right, uh, actually we did something very similar. Let's draw two lines, F, F prime and E, E prime, parallel to AD. Okay? Now, since this is equal to this, because F is a midpoint, now these are two parallel lines. That's why these two are equal to each other as well. So you have an angle, 
you have two equal segments here, you draw two parallel lines to another angle, and that's why you have these two congruent to each other as well. Same thing here. Since um, this is congruent to this, you have these two pieces, these two segments, this and this. These are parallel, this is an angle, these segments are equal, that's why these two will be equal. Now, why did I use the same double strike here as here? Well, these two are halves, halves of CD. These two are halves of BD. But D is a midpoint of BC, which means each one is equal to a quarter of BC. That's why they're all equal to each other in lengths. And since we have established that, let's now consider angle E, B, C. So this side, B, E, is the median. Here we have one, two, three equal segments on this side, and we connect it on this side. That's why these three will be equal as well. So now the angle is this, and these are three parallel, three, three parallel lines. And that's why we have this situation. Since these three are equal to each other, we have this is one-third and this is two-thirds. That's it. Thank you very much.